They're all incredible insects. Just watch what they can do. If your favorite Pokemon is a bug type, I'm sorry, and this is coming from a certified Glycopod apologist. The debate as to what the absolute worst type in Pokemon is, is something that's been going on since the game's inception. For years, it was mostly a debate on to whether it was the ice or bug type, but with Generation 9 finally buffing the ice type by changing hail to snow, a weather which grants all ice types a passive 50% increase in defense, it's become pretty apparent that the bug type has very little going for it. So today, let's take a look at the bug type, what makes it work, and what makes it not. I'll even suggest some ideas for fixing the type without completely breaking the game open. So if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into it. The bug type is an interesting idea. From a single player gameplay perspective, the bug type is meant to be an early game type that would showcase the mechanics of evolution and how Pokemon will get stronger as they're trained and leveled up. Take for example the two original bug types, Weedle and Caterpie. Both of them start off as pretty average early game Pokemon who evolve very early on into a cocoon-like Pokemon which can do very little other than sit on the field, and then, again, at another early level it will evolve into a Pokemon with some pretty impressive stats to the point of the game at which they're available. The issues arise later in the game when those stats just aren't enough to stand up to the higher powered Pokemon the player will encounter and the wider range of typings that threaten it for super effective of damage. The player is left with the choice of either carrying that Pokemon through to the end of the game despite its shortcomings, or dropping it altogether for a Pokemon which is ultimately stronger than it. This is a really clever and interesting way to test the player and teach them game mechanics during the single player campaign. However, once they leave the single player world and enter into online battles against other people, it becomes apparent just how this typing fails competitively. The elephant in the room here is obviously going to be the bug type's egregious type matchups. Defensively, bug types are weak to rock, fire, and flying types, which are some of the best and most common offensive types in the game. They resist fighting, grass, and ground types. While resisting ground and fighting can be great, it's just not enough to make up for its lack of offensive prowess. We can see this because the bug type is super effective against only grass, dark, and psychic types, while being resisted by steel, fairy, poison, fire, flying, ghost, and fighting types. They hit so little for super effective damage, while also being resisted by a large chunk of the Pokemon in the game. It's because of this that the bug types struggle to not only get on the field safely, but achieve anything once they're actually active. Genuinely, the best buff bug types have received in the last 20 years of the game was the introduction of the move U-Turn, a bug move which deals damage while switching out the user. This allows for bug Pokemon to at least get off the field for free as the opponent switches into one of their five resists to a bug move. All this is worsened by the fact that in singles play, Stealth Rocks deal 25% of the total health of bug types in damage just for them hitting the field. So even with constant switching, it can be pretty awful for them. This typing only worsens as we enter into the realm of doubles gameplay, where bug types arguably struggle even more. Some of the best offensive moves in doubles include Rock Slide, Heat Wave, and Bleak Wind Storm. Now, these moves, all dealing spread damage while also having a chance to flinch, burn, or drop speed respectively, is the main reason for their high usage. But because of this, bug types struggle to simply exist as long as these moves are threatened. The most consistent and powerful bug type in doubles is undoubtedly Volcarona. This is because of its great stats and move pool along with its partial fire typing, allowing for it to play both a supportive and offensive role on a team simultaneously. Despite this, Volcarona really only sees play when the trends of the metagame favor it, and it can fall out of favor just as easily as it fell into it. Volcarona is unfortunately the exception to the rule, as most bug types can't achieve this level of power. As a matter of fact, the average base stat total of every fully evolved bug type is 461, which is pretty close to Ninjask's base stat total of 456. Now, Ninjask isn't exactly the pinnacle of power in competitive Pokemon, and while an average base stat in the 460s might not sound too bad, you need to take into account all the previously mentioned factors which prevent bug types from finding success in competitive play. It takes quite a lot for a bug type to become competitively relevant. In fact, the strongest bug types in the game all have something pushing them past their downsides to keep them that powerful. As previously mentioned, Volcarona's fire typing with Flame Body, Redirection, and a great move pool and stats 
allows for it to function in doubles. Scissor steel typing combined with bug is a perfect combo that leaves it with just a times 4 fire weakness. And it also has a great attack stat with access to bullet punch in conjunction with technician to boost its power and let it be a great setup sweeper. Hermosa and Buzzwell both have legendary tier stats as well as the ability beast boost to let them be effective sweepers, but despite this they still struggle a bit in doubles. And in singles, Shuckle's massive 230 defenses allow for it to set up hazards like rock and sticky web to support its team while sitting on the field for quite a long time. All these Pokemon seem to succeed in spite of their bug typing rather than because of it and that's really the root of the problem. Most other types have something great going for them. Fire types can't be burned and are offensively some of the strongest in the game. Dark types are immune to prankster moves and have access to some of the best moves in the game. Poison types can't miss the move toxic, can't be poisoned, and can resist some of the best types in the game like fighting and fairy. And ghost types are great offensively and defensively with the added bonus of not being able to be trapped on the field and being immune to fake out. Even the ice type is a pretty great offensive type with snow to patch up its poor defensive type matchups nowadays. Bug, on the other hand, has virtually nothing going Going for it. Really, the best thing bug types have are some cool moves that aren't even exclusive to the bug type like first impression or sticky web. So how do we buff the bug type to put it on par with other types or at least make it debatable as to whether or not it's the worst type in the game? Well, first things first, we need to patch up that type chart. Really, I think defensively bug types can stay as they are. While I'd like to remove one of their weaknesses to fix up this chart, it just doesn't make sense for bug types not to be weak to fire, rock, or flying moves, so that's off the table for me. Offensively, those resists seem to be overkill. I can get bug type being resisted by steel, fire, poison, and flying types, but for what reason do ghost types, fighting types, and fairy types resist bugs? Look, either ghost or fighting can keep its resistance, but not both. And there's no reason for fairy, the best type in the game, to be resisting bug, the worst type in the game. At present, Fluttermane, a ghost fairy type, has dominated modern competitive play and has a 4 times resist against bug moves. If both ghost and fairy lost their bug resists, this Pokemon would get hit by bugs for neutral damage. It'd be fearing leech life from any decent bug type with a good attack stat. And hey, Caloric Shadow Rider even becomes weak to bug if ghost loses its resistance to it. So now that beast gets one shot by a fairly strong first impression from something like Glycopod. The type chart getting more favorable to bug types is basically a non-negotiable buff required to fix the type. But what's an extra thing we can add on top? to really seal the deal. Well, we need to tread lightly here because, like I said, there's already a number of bug types that succeed despite their typing. We need to make sure whatever blanket effect we add onto the type doesn't lead to these Pokemon becoming overtuned or overpowered. So let me suggest three ideas which can be implemented individually, but probably not together. A frankly great buff would be for bug types across the board to not have their moves be redirectable. Where grass types are immune to powder moves making them ignore rage powder, this buff would allow for bug types to ignore all redirection like follow me, ally switch, or even storm drain. Think of it like a built-in stalwart ability. This might be the most busted of my three suggestions, but it would make bug types the premier counterplay to redirection Pokemon like Ogre Pond and Clefairy. This would even allow for Pokemon like Araquanid to attack in front of storm drain users with impunity. This is the strongest, but the least favorite of my buffs. Another route would be leading into bugs being able to climb walls and plants by granting all bug types sticky hold as a passive. This would allow for the likes of Fortress and Shuckle to never have their recovery items knocked off and prevent Quiver Dance Pokemon like Masquerade from having something like a Choice Scarf tricked onto them to lock them into setup. This is the weakest of the three buffs I'd suggest, but it's fairly balanced and thematically appropriate. Finally, the buff I think would be the most fair while also solving a core game issue is to grant all bug types the passive of ignoring any stat changes to negatively affect their chances of landing a move. This means that bug types will ignore the opponent's evasiveness boosts and not be able to have their accuracy dropped. It's sort of like Compound Eye's Light. The accuracy of their moves isn't increased, but they'd become the ultimate counterplay to minimize spam or any form of evasion, where previously that Masquerade on your team was just there to set up sticky webs and then faint. Now it's also your win condition against that dude on the ladder that really likes minimize muck and smeargle. This buff wouldn't break the stronger bug types like Scizor or Volcarona, but it make the bug type actually desirable for once. The bug type is certainly a tricky subject. There's obvious changes that can be made, but buffing the type without flipping the game entirely on its head is not a small task. These were simply a few ideas I had, but, but let me know what you thought about my ideas in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, let me know what you think about the bug type in general. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me any further, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all these videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. And I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream almost every day, both of which will be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.